Hi friends, so this year I made the decision to kickstart my journey to motherhood and in this video I will be discussing infertility, where I currently am in the IVF journey, and what the IVF journey entails step by step. Alicia Latrice here. I am new to YouTube and this is my first ever YouTube video where I am sharing um, the first update of my IVF journey and the type of content that you will be able to find on my channel moving forward will be around living a healthy lifestyle, ways that you can find the balance um, in all that you do as well as creating a wealthy empire. So if you are tired of putting yourself last and putting your goals and aspirations on the back burner and you're ready to live life on your own terms and living it to the fullest, then I make content just for you. Make sure you subscribe for more and to stay tuned along the way. Because I was diagnosed with PCOS prior to starting this journey, my fertility doctor best recommended that IVF be the best protocol for me in hopes to conceive this year. And the reason she best selected this protocol is because I obtain more male testosterone um, than I should normally as a woman. I have the excess insulin, the irregular periods. So I also am considered to be um, overweight. So a lot of different factors she took in consideration prior to best selecting IVF as the protocol. Um, this journey has been information overload. And for those of you who don't know, this is my first IVF cycle. So it's very overwhelming. I am anticipating the emotional, physical, and financial strain that it will have on me. But it will be worth it in the end because I am more than willing to go above and beyond and to the moon and back um, to conceive my precious baby. So many of you initially started following me on social media um, to follow along my weight loss journey that I was undergoing the past three years. And as you can see, my content has shifted a little bit. I still post myself in the gym and kind of what I eat in a day. However, now I am sh showcasing and highlighting this IVF journey and bringing awareness to PCOS and infertility. And what I have been doing is I am uploading real-time content on my Instagram so if you don't already follow me, head over there and follow me on Instagram at Pretty Fitly. And the reason why I will be posting more frequently on Instagram is because, come on now, it's instant, right? Um, and because there are kind of lags within the IVF journey where I will have two week downtime or three week downtime. So there won't be any content to upload to YouTube. And the way that I will be uploading the content here on YouTube is in chronological order. And that means step by step in this IVF journey. So I'm bringing you along, I'm bringing you with me along the way entirely. And it will help better help anyone who's currently going through the IVF journey as well. Or if you're considering IVF, it kind of will be that glide path and that guide for you to know what to expect and know what steps um, um, are part of this journey in its entirety. When I made the decision to move forward with IVF, I spent endless amount of man hours researching fertility clinics, providers, success rate and cost. All of these things are so important as you embark this journey because your care team is going to be the team that you work very closely with over the course of the next three to four months. And you really want a care team that ultimately cares, right? You will be reaching out to them in regards to any questions you may have, if you need prescriptions refilled, if you're having an allergic reaction, or if you just need just guidance in regards to anything along the way. Cost is another big one because different fertility clinics charge a different amount, believe it or not. I, um, you can have a fertility clinic in the Houston, Texas area that charges $18,000 for a full round of IVF. And then you may be able to go to San Antonio and find an affordable clinic that only charges about $6,000 for a full round of IVF. So that also plays a key factor because many of us are self-paid patients when it comes to moving forward with a fertility clinic and our health benefits do not cover um, the cost. So that's very um, important. When I went and did the investigation of fertility clinics and doctors, I would do a meet and greet with the doctor and the staff. I would do a 
a facility tour um, to make sure it's inviting. Is the staff welcoming? Are they friendly? Um, is it clean? You know, do I feel at home? Um, and with the doctors, the meet and greet really did a focus on personal and professional because you want someone who you work closely with, who's compatible, who really listens to you and would like to assist you in whatever protocol you even feel that would be best uh, suited for you and your situation. So far in this IVF journey, I have completed the initial consultation with the fertility clinic that I had selected. And this initial visit was scheduled three days after my menstrual cycle had ended. Yes, we are gonna get very acquainted. You're gonna know my body, my situation inside and out, just an FYI. Um, so the third day after my period ended, I went into the facility to have my initial consultation. And this is because they want to do a extensive amount of lab work on you right after your menstrual cycle had, it has ended. And this is where they screen you for a variety of different things to make sure you don't have any deficiencies, um, to do a vaginal ultrasound, to see what your uterus looks like, if you have um, any cysts or just kind of anything abnormal to be addressed prior to moving forward with your protocol that had been selected. And also during this initial consultation, I was able to meet with the staff again, do another walkthrough, and I had a um, another meet and greet with the provider, and we really just kind of touched base again to make sure my mind hadn't changed on the protocol that was selected, that I wanted to move forward with, um, understanding that it would also be best to select a protocol once all of the lab work got back. We discussed if I knew of any infertility, you know, issues um, prior to the screening and those things. Um, the biggest one also was checking me to see if I um, struggle with any ovarian reserve. And what that is, is does your body create lots of eggs or do you create quite a few eggs? And thankfully she was pleased to see that I create a lot of eggs and that also may be because I have PCOS as well. So that is how the initial consultation visit typically goes. Um, we are in, in the world of COVID. So of course my sister, my mom, um, no one could go with me um, on this visit. I had to go alone. Um, which I foresee that being the case moving forward with a lot of the other visits that I have to do just because they're trying to contain the amount of traffic they have in and out of the facility. Now that the initial consultation has been conducted, all of the lab work has been completed. Now I wait for two weeks. Wow, finally my first two week waiting period. Um, and as I wait this waiting period, when my lab work does come back, the provider will review it, make sure there's no red flags. And if there are some things that need to be addressed prior to starting the protocol, she will create a game plan for me, upload it into my patient portal. Um, and then we also schedule another visit for her and I to discuss the lab results in real time. And because it's not necessary for me to be in the facility to discuss the results, we will do a teleconference um, visit via Zoom to discuss those results and it saves me a trip to the fertility clinic. Um, after the lab work has come back and fingers crossed that we are green across the board. So I technically have about four weeks before I start STEMS, um, which is the next phase of this IVF journey, which also gives me enough time to look for a sperm donor. I will be doing a separate video on what their process is looking for a sperm donor, how well it went for me, how well it didn't go for me, and just kind of any overall feedback that I may have. I am super excited to look for a sperm donor, and I actually have about six cryobanks in mind that I'll be uh, using to select the, the sperm that best fits what I'm looking for, for not only me, but for uh, my babies to be. IVF is such a big deal. I mean, trying to conceive is such a big deal. I am overjoyed i am so excited i'm nervous i'm scared i'm anxious i'm just so ready to move forward on this journey as it's, it's my first ever journey um to conceive and i am more so grateful for all of you the genuine interest and care and support has been out of this world so i thank you for allowing me to use this platform to bring awareness to infertility and to share my ivf journey and step by step Thinking, next steps in this journey, as I await the lab work, um, I wait for my menstrual cycle to start. And believe it or not, I have never been more anxious and excited for my period to start. 
only because it moves me a step closer and a step further in this journey. So once my period starts, I will start the birth control for two weeks. And right after, three days after ending the birth control, I will start stems. And that will be the daily injections um, that I would do for 14 days to prepare my body for egg retrieval. So after that, you do the egg retrieval. And when you do egg retrieval, I'm really excited about that because the embryos that, well, the eggs that are removed from my body, they will be fertilized and we will monitor them daily for about six days to see which ones fully mature and make it to the blastocyst stage. Um, and those that make it to the blastocyst stage will be sent for PGS testing. I'm investing in this just because I think it's so neat and interesting how we can leverage um, science to tell the genders of my embryos ahead of time, to check them, to overall examine them for any chromosomal abnormalities, to make sure there's no genetic disorders, um, and to make sure all of the embryos are pretty much normal. Because you want normal embryos because it betters the success of implanting in your uterus when we get to the transfer stage. I am so excited for transfer stage because that kind of gets you to the final stage in the IVF process, and that's where you select um, whatever embryo that you would want to transfer back into your uterus, and you wait a two-week waiting period in hopes that that embryo implants in your uterus, and then you, you do some HCG testing um, based on your blood work in hopes you have a pregnancy announcement. So I know that probably was so much information in such a, a short amount of time, but Again, I am remaining optimistic that I would conceive my precious baby and become pregnant during this first round of IVF. And when I do officially become pregnant, I will graduate from my fertility clinic to an OBGYN between 10 to 12 weeks of being pregnant. During this time, I will also be doing a gender reveal. So make sure you are following along to see if I am blessed with one precious baby or if twins or even triplets and what those genders will be. Um, please remember that I will be providing real time updates almost every other day on my Instagram page and the YouTube content will follow will be every other week. So the next video that I will be uploading to my channel will be in regards to stems and egg retrieval. So make sure you are tuned in and I will see you soon.